Welcome back to The Breakfast. It's almost the final lap of conversations here. And uh, now we are going to be talking about the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act uh, 2015. And of course, a continuous conversation, uh, mostly because of the level of domestication that has, you know, we've seen, you know, for that bill across the states in Nigeria. Uh, how much has changed since the law or the bill was passed in 2015? Um, how different are we now with regards protecting uh, uh, citizens and Nigerian citizens from rape and, and you know, violence in marriage and, and different, of course, um, MGM um, as well. yes, uh, female genital mutilation. There's so much of it um, in that bill. Uh, we invited this morning Faith Kalagbo. She is a Programs Officer, Alliances for Africa. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you. Uh, we also have uh, Ms. Angela Unkwo Akwalu, uh, Vice Chairman, IMO, uh, Correspondent Chapel. Good morning. Thanks for joining us also. My pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So I'm going to start with um, Mrs. Unkwo Akwalu. Um, there's, there was a lot of expectations and um, uh, since the bill was passed in 2015 when it was signed by the President. Has anything been changed? Has, has you know, there been any difference since the bill was passed with regards protection of Nigerians from, from violence? Well, um, in other states, yes. In other states, yes. But because we are yet to domesticate our own VA bill, it's, um, we're still walking around as it were. We, we can't prosecute anybody based on that bill yet because it's not been passed into law. That's the current situation for Imo State. Okay, so so is, is it just Imo now? Which other states do, you, do we have challenges with? Mm, I know for sure that Imo is the only state in the southeast that is yet to domesticate its bill. A couple of states are up north and then a bit on the south. But definitely, Imo is the only state in the southeast that is yet to pass its bill. That I know for sure. Okay. Faith, if you can hear me, I want you to tell me what the situation is in Imo State regarding the cases or the statistics of violence against persons as it concerns the issue of rape and FGM. Thank you very much. So, um, regarding um, the issue of um, rape and uh, basically sexual gender based violence, personally, as an organization, Alliances for Africa, to, to um, documenting cases of SGBB during the COVID. And um, currently, between, um, that was March, we started the documentation. Between March to July, we recorded way over 70 cases. And the um, bulk of this number were basically minors. And we had cases of incest, fathers raping their daughters, and getting to the extent of impregnating them. And also, because of the projects we are um, implementing currently, part of our um, deliverables is to ensure that the VAP is passed as um, a measure to put um, in check these vices that, are, that have been ravaging our society. So um, the issue we've had over time is with the religious groups because they feel that um, the bill is here to promote same-sex marriage. They also feel that um, it's also supposed to make women king. That those were most of the misconstrued information we've had them propagate over time about the bill. So basically, um, before now, the bill was passed, way before it was passed in other states, but it was repealed because on the grounds of um, alleged abortion bill, they said that um, the bill is supposed to promote abortion for young girls. But currently, that pass has been repealed and reintroduced into the House. Hopefully, it got to the public hearing, but it's faced a lot of antagonism from the religious groups. So we are saying that what the information they are um, propagating out there is totally wrong. None of that is true. And the only reason why we as uh, civil society organizations are really out there to see that this bill is passed is because we've seen how that um, children, after getting raped, are the frontline um, 
human rights defenders, um, help to apprehend the perpetrators. When the cases get to court, they get lingered. At the end of the day, it could as well end in them not having jurisdiction because the penal code, the criminal code, including the recently passed Abjao law, does not provide adequate definition for the uh, for rape. For instance, the penal code and the criminal code provides that um, rape is when someone has carnal knowledge of another. But the back goes a little bit further to mention that an object could be used to perpetrate this act. It also goes further to introduce the act of um, unconsensual um, kissing and any kind of object, be it somebody's uh, fingers, whatever is used to perpetrate this act, it provides that it is rape. So this is why we as civil society organizations are interested in this bill getting passed and also because it will help for survivors of violence to get essential services that the government as a reason of um, by reason of um, of um, their responsibilities to the citizens to ensure that they have these services free of charge including legal medical and psychosocial support all right um, so this is why we are interested in the bill getting passed yeah, it's absolutely important. I, I want to go back to um, Mrs. Angela Nkuakpolu, um, your Vice Chairman, Imo Correspondent Chapel. Um, I want you to know your thoughts on how much more public enlightenment is needed uh, to ensure that these narratives that have slowed down the passage of the bill and the uh, domestication of the bill in different states, how much more public enlightenment is needed uh, to um, reduce the false narratives about this bill and how much you know, has been done so far? Well, thank you. There is a group, there is a committee called the Imo State Committee on Ending Violence Against Persons, Against Women and Girls. And um, we've been meeting and reaching out to groups to make it obvious that the fears of the those religious bodies, particularly the PFN, the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, and the Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria are not um, true. Like Faith said, they allege that uh, women are going to start pushing to become traditional rulers and also have control, uh, push for abortion and stuff. But that's, the bill goes way, way, way beyond that. So we are meeting groups, the, a lot of public enlightenment is going on, seminars are going on. The same group has reached out to so many organizations. They reached out to all the facets of the church. The church, um, that's CAM now, has five blocks. And they've reached out to almost everyone. Everyone, yes, they have. They've reached out to the Muslim group. And it's, it's, it's a continuous thing. The more you push for it, the more they also, like they say, information is dynamic. They also change the narratives and also tilt it to favor the falsehood. Or, but, but how, how, much, how much influence do these groups have? Made. How much influence do these groups have um, over the state houses of assembly? Because aside emo state now, you've went, we mentioned that it was just 19 uh, states that have domesticated this bill. So we still have a lot more states to go. Um, is it the same challenge that is affecting the passage and domestication of the bill in, in all these other states? And how much influence do these groups really have on the state houses of assembly? Well, in, in a state like Imo, I, I, I describe Imo as a very religious state, not necessarily spiritual, but I know that in Imo state, it's almost impossible to get uh, a restaurant to eat on a Sunday morning till say sometime around 4 p.m. because everybody believes that Sunday is is holy and you have to close shop or something like that. Yeah, so what it means is that the, the, the members of the State House of Assembly fall under the either Catholics, Anglicans, Methodists, Pentecostals, or probably those that fall under the those we describe as the OAIC. So to a large extent, my state is a very religious state. And people are, the, the lawmakers could also be um, particular. They don't want to fall in the bad books of their spiritual heads. That's, so that's a major issue. 
that's okay. definitely a major issue. Okay, let me let me bring back faith into this matter. Looking critically at this bill, we see that it's tries to define the instrument of rape, saying it can't, it can't just be a man and his organs. There, can, there are other instruments that can be used to rape. Yes. It you know, defines minimum and maximum penalty for rape. It also says that uh, there should be compensation for victims and all of that. So if there's so much you know, great ideals in this bill, and you know, you've know, you mentioned, uh, Angela, that uh, the reason why this bill you know, has not been passed in most states is because most of these lawmakers are religious persons and wouldn't want to offend their religious families. Others. So don't you think that, you know, the, the passage of this bill is being stunted or prohibited because of the fact that there's not enough enlightenment about the merits of the bill in states where they are yet to be passed? And don't you think that should be adopted, you know, so everyone can see the pros of the bill? Okay, thank you very much. If you remember, uh, Angela mentioned that there's a committee called the Evo State Committee on Gender Violence. As a matter of fact, that last year, and including this year, we intend to continue with all of that. We've gone to so many groups to ensure that they know about the bill and they know that there is no other ulterior motive, but they insist. As a matter of fact, we've gone to the Catholic groups, we've gone to traditional um, rulers, we've gone to um, the media. We, there was a period where um, there was this uh, propaganda where they started the whole issue, saying that the VAP is promoting same-sex marriage, women want to be king, and all of that. We bombarded the um, airwaves with um, topics on the VAP, taking our time to dissect the bill, bringing each session to bear to all citizens. But we just feel that um, the religious groups, I don't know, I don't know if I should call it um, I don't know, maybe because of the last time that the bill provided um, um, a kind of provision for abortion for mothers who get raped. That's the pregnancy came as a result of rape. So because of that, they feel that maybe at some point when they flow with us, maybe we will go and reintroduce that part which we told them has been repealed. But we keep letting them know that the law is for the people, and at the end of the day, if such is being reintroduced without their knowledge, they will still get to find out. And they can still move for a motion for the bill to be repealed. All right. Um, so we've done these enlightenments, and we do not intend to stop anyways. Uh, we hope that, we are going you know, to continue the... Because we know that more people need to be reached. Faith Kalagbo, we hope that the conversation we're having this morning is also part of the enlightened, uh, enlightenment that is ne needed across the country and, of course, in states sure. where it has not been domesticated. We're out of time. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you. Um, thank you also for the work that you are doing and uh, the you. campaign you've continued to run. Also, Mrs. Angela Nkuakbolu, thank you so much for your time. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Absolutely. So now we're turning our focus to sports. We know the headlines. The National Sports Festival has been postponed again and again. We'll have Wally Scott, our sports correspondent, discuss that with us after this break. <laughs>